Sydney Analytical's Museums and Cultural Heritage Node undertakes both routine conservation science analyses and pioneering research to develop new scientific protocols and methodologies to support the investigation, understanding, conservation and preservation of cultural heritage objects and materials with a focus on high quality research outcomes, education, community engagement and consultation the facility is accessible to students, researchers, academics, industry professionals and private collectors. Hello everyone, my name is Therese Harrison and I'm the Professional Officer for Museums Analyses at Sydney Analytical. We are presenting to you from Sydney, Australia and we want to start by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of the land on which we work at the university and to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. I also want to acknowledge the Garigal or saltwater people who are the traditional custodians of the land and waters which I am currently working on from home. As some of you may be aware, Sydney is currently in lockdown at the time of the creation of this workshop, so unfortunately we weren't able to present the material we originally intended. Uh, we've done our best to put together a presentation that could be as practical as possible given the circumstances. I'm briefly going to talk about some of the X-ray fluorescence instruments we use at the facility and our approaches before handing you over to our facility manager, Dr. Elizabeth Carter, who will essentially run you through training on the Brooker Tracer 5i handheld XRF spectrometer. At Sydney Analytical, there are two main portable XRF instruments used in the analysis of cultural heritage materials. Used for the analysis of elements from sodium to uranium, and covering spot sizes ranging from 70 microns to 8 millimetres. These instruments are fast, cost-effective, require little or no sample preparation, and permit in-situ analyses particularly useful for large, cumbersome artefacts that may not otherwise fit into a sample chamber, such as large paintings. 2D mapping capabilities are used to generate element distribution maps from samples over an area of approximately 4.5 by 4.5 centimetres, this facilitates the investigation of small works on different supports and regions of interest within larger works. The micrometer spatial resolution further enables the investigation of layers. Cultural heritage objects and materials often require different and specifically tailored approaches. Sydney Analytical undertake both routine analyses and broader investigative projects. In some instances, materials identification can be very straightforward as is often the case when identifying pigments. The use of a portable X-ray fluorescence spectrometer for elemental analysis can produce conclusive results in some instances when considered in the context of the object, for example, historical pigment availability. However, it is always best to take a multi-analytical approach as different techniques can often provide complementary information. While XRF is commonly used as a first-pass tool for gaining an elemental understanding of your materials, it is not always sufficient for sample characterization. Where XRF might be able to provide information on the presence or absence of an element, as seen in this example of pigment identification, it does not provide information about molecular composition and structure, which is obtained using vibrational spectroscopy. Many of the different techniques available in the Sydney Analytical Facilities provide complementary information, which helps to support a robust characterisation of different materials. My name is Dr Elizabeth Carter and I am the manager of the Sydney Analytical Vibrational Spectroscopy Facility at the University of Sydney. Sydney Analytical is the university's core research facility dedicated to material, chemical and biological analysis. We offer open access to the university's flagship capabilities for vibrational and X-ray spectroscopy to support researchers as they address their most challenging research priorities. We warmly welcome participants to this workshop on X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy and hope that you find it useful. Please do not hesitate to reach out to us with any questions at the end of the presentation or indeed after. Brooker Tracer 5i Handheld Spectrometer Introduction the Brooker Tracer 5i is a handheld energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence or XRF spectrometer capable of providing non-destructive elemental analysis. Elements from sodium to uranium can be analysed with both 3mm and 8mm collimeter available. As the tracer is portable, it can be used either in our laboratory or on site, as long as the correct safety protocols are in place. Instrument safety. 
The most important thing to consider when operating the tracer is radiation safety. When in use and x-rays are being emitted, there is the potential to be exposed to ionising radiation. Ionising radiation can cause tissue and bone damage, with high levels of exposure leading to an increased risk of cancer. Whether the dose is received in one event or received as lower levels over a long period. As a result, several safety measures have been put in place. Whether in the laboratory or in the field, we ask that IA19 training is undertaken by an EPA recognised course provider and that subsequently an EPA licence is obtained prior to accessing the tracer. Users who intend to operate the tracer in other states or overseas should contact staff so that we can make the appropriate arrangements. Each state in Australia does have its own ionising radiation safety requirements. Access to the lab is restricted with warning signs in place outside all entry doors and the tracer also has warning lights to indicate active emission of a radiation. Radiation exposure must be monitored with a portable decimeter. When using the tracer, you must keep in mind where the radiation is being directed. For handheld operation, keep your hands behind the trigger and always point the instrument away from yourself and others, and always away from doorways, windows or thoroughfares. At all times, ensure that other people in the room stand behind you and are not in the path of x-rays. Don't forget, x-rays pass through most materials, so if you point the instrument towards a bench and you are sitting with your legs under that bench, you could be exposing yourself to radiation. For smaller samples, you should mount the instrument on the mounting support and use the radiation shield to eliminate exposure. For security, the batteries and power pack are kept separate to the instrument. You need to collect these along with the user decimeter from Sydney Analytical staff whenever you are using the tracer. Keep the decimeter on you at all times while using the instrument. Inform staff of the final reading once you have finished your booking. Should any high reading be recorded at any point during use, inform staff immediately. Instrument parts and accessories. The tracer packs into a hard case for transportation and is stored in this case when not in use. In the hard case, you will also find instrument accessories, a mounting stand, USB cables, wireless router and battery charger. On the instrument itself, you will find a measurement window from which the x-rays are admitted, trigger, battery compartment, stand ridge and warning lights, power button, control window and power and USB connection ports. It is extremely important that you never touch the measurement window. The small blue accessories box contains collimators, filters and a screwdriver. Before powering up the instrument, you should consider which collimator you need based on the required spot size and whether any filters are required. Instrument setup. Ensure you are wearing a decimeter and the correct personal protective clothing. The tracer can be powered off main power or battery operated. Check the power leads, cables, batteries and instrument housing for damage or signs of wear. If there is any doubt, do not use the instrument and contact a Sydney Analytical staff member. Check the charge on the batteries by pushing on the side. When you've finished using the instrument, please return the batteries fully charged. To insert the battery, depress the button at the base of the instrument handle to open the battery compartment. The battery can only be inserted one way. To check the battery is going in the correct way, make sure the slots on the battery align up with the pins at the bottom of the battery instrument shaft. If you are operating instrument off main power, connect the power cable into the port at the back and switch on at the power point. One collimator will normally already be inside the instrument when you start it up. If this is not the one you need, you can change it by using the screwdriver to open the side panel near the analysis window. Once open, use your fingernail to gently pull on the collimator by the small thumb hole shown here. Do not touch the head of the collimator. To avoid this risk, it is recommended that gloves are worn. This step should also be performed in a clean space 
as any time the instrument is opened, there is a chance of particulates like dust or dirt entering the system. The filters are also manually changeable and are attached to the back of the relevant collimator. If the filter needs changing, use the same screwdriver to remove the current filter and replace it with one in the accessories box. The filters can only be inserted one way as shown. Screw the new filter in place. Take care not to touch the film in the filters. Once you have the correct collimator filter combination, carefully insert it into the instrument along the correct edge and gently push it in. Replace the screws on the cover. Typically, you will find that the filter installed with the collimator will be empty. This is because there is also a filter wheel inside the tracer that is automated and does not require manual handling. These filters are selected when you create your experiment setup. If your sample is small enough, you may be able to operate the tracer using the mounting stand and sample stage. Set up the stand by lifting the blue component up and then unfolding it all the way. To set the tracer on the stand, depress the red button on the blue part of the stand to pull back the white clip on the other side, and then slide the ridge of the instrument into the slot. When the instrument is at the right spot and height, release the red button. The instrument should click into place. You can position the tracer in the stand with the measurement window pointing either up or down. Move the blue part of the stand into a vertical position for analysis. Please be mindful of any cables getting caught in the stand. If appropriate for your sample, you can also use the sample stage. This fits over the top of the instrument window and can only go on one way. The radiation shield should be placed over the stage if possible to provide shielding from the emitted ionizing radiation. If you need to hold the tracer for analysis, make sure that when it is not being actively used, the instrument is positioned on its side on a flat surface and that it is always kept pointing away from people, doorways, windows and thoroughfares. Once the tracer is in position, turn it on using the power button found on the top left corner of the screen. Give the x-ray tube approximately 10 minutes to warm up and be ready for use. Under no circumstances, except in the case of an emergency, can you leave the instrument unattended once it has been switched on. Sample considerations, preparation and mounting. Samples should preferably be flat and homogeneous. Where this is not the case, we recommend that you analyse multiple spots with the flattest area possible presented to the instrument. Where samples are thin and being analysed with a handheld setup, you should back the sample with a polycarbonate disc to eliminate spectral features from the otherwise underlying material or substrate, or the background metal plate, which will also absorb the x-rays. Your spectrum may still be contaminated with elements from the disc or plate, though these are relatively homogeneous and potential spectral contaminants are well understood. If using these or other material, it is good practice to collect a spectrum from these materials to understand how they could be affecting the observed composition of your sample. If you have liquid or loose powder samples, sample cups can be supplied as well. Remember that you should never touch the analysis window as this could lead to contamination that will affect your spectra. Also, as this window is a thin polypropylene film, you should never place any sharp samples on it. The analysis window will break if subjected to sharp edges, points and or too much pressure. Instrument operation and data collection. The tracer is most often operated handheld but can also be operated remotely from the instrument computer. To operate the instrument handheld, hold down the power button on the top right of the instrument screen and wait until the Brooker software, pictured here, has loaded. To log in, enter the password 12345. A window will appear with an ionising radiation warning and you need to pull the instrument trigger to proceed. The current configuration will then appear on the screen. Click OK to proceed. Select your desired method from the application button. 
If you are using spectrometer mode, click on settings. You can either customize your collection parameters or select pre-programmed settings depending on your material. Select the appropriate kilovolts and microamp settings, duration time in seconds, collimators and filters. Select manual trigger to start and stop analyses using the trigger and click OK to return to the main screen. To name your analysis, click on the Edit Info button on the main screen. Here you can change the name of the analysis and any other fields you would like. Double click or tap the sample name to change it. Click OK to accept changes and OK again to return to the main screen. Once the conditions are set, position the instrument window against the sample and pull the trigger. The ridge lights will flash red while x-rays are being emitted from the instrument. It is important to note that Tracer 5i has a proximity sensor above the measurement window. If this is not covered by a sample, then no x-rays will be emitted as a safety precaution. If you wish to capture an image of the area analysed, click on Camera on the main screen and the Capture button before analysis. The camera is also a good tool for positioning the analysis window on the area of interest. Remove the spectrometer from the sample after analysis is complete. If you are operating the instrument from the computer, make sure that the instrument is safely and correctly set up. You will then need to establish a connection between the instrument and the computer. You can do this using either the Ethernet cable or by establishing a connection with the file hub router. Turn on the instrument using the power button located on the top left corner above the control or display window and ensure that you've given it 10 minutes to warm up. If connecting by USB, simply plug in the USB cable into the instrument using the port located here at the back of the instrument and a USB port on the computer. To use the router, turn on the file hub router by holding the power button down until all of the blue lights have been lit and the Wi-Fi symbol flashes green. Once the Wi-Fi symbol has stopped flashing and is blue, the router is ready. On the computer, connect to the file hub router. It may take a few minutes for the computer Wi-Fi to recognize the router. Open the RTAC software on the toolbar under device, select connect. A box will appear with the instrument serial number and IP. Click connect. When the instrument and computer are connected, a green bar should appear. Open measurement method to bring up the method editor. You can select an existing method or create a new method. To create a new method, type a method name and click add. In the measurement tab, Change the voltage and current to the desired values for your experiment. On the right hand side, a list of illuminations will appear with preset voltage and current settings as part of Brooker factory calibration methods. Although the calibration files are not accessible, the preset tube settings can be a guide for your samples and desired elements. If you are using a set time, change the value to the desired time. Select the filter being used. All analyses should take place in air as the atmosphere. Select a folder to auto save data if needed. The file names are auto incremented, so no data will be overwritten. In the correction tab, ensure that the escape, shelf, background, and pile-up boxes are checked. In the Identifications tab, check the Auto box if you would like the software to automatically determine what elements are present, or check the Preset box to, to predetermine which elements to identify in the spectra. Once the Preset box is checked, a periodic table will appear and you can select desired elements, or if you have already run a test sample and selected elements, you can check the Get Elements box and the elements currently selected in the analysis window will appear in the method. Leave the PDZ option tab and deconvolution tab as is 
with Bayes selected and the quantification tab as is unless you have a prepared calibration to use. Once finished selecting parameters, click OK. To analyze an area, click the play button in the toolbar of the software. The ridge lights will flash red whilst x-rays are being emitted. Instrument Packup Whether the tracer is used in the XRF lab or at another location, the instrument needs to be returned to its case. After completion of all your measurements, turn off the instrument by selecting Logout in the menu and pressing the power button. Turn off the power pack at the power point and disconnect cables or remove batteries. Clean up your samples from on and around the stage, analysis window and bench top and dispose of them correctly. Decontaminate surfaces by wiping with 80% ethanol if needed and make sure care is taken with the analysis window. Make sure that all accessories are returned to their proper place and the workspace is tidy. Remove any signage that has been put in place. Return the batteries or power pack and dosimeter to Sydney Analytical staff and ensure you log the dosimeter reading.